In addition, now, this, again, just like the data, this stuff is overlap, <coughs> or not overlap, I mean, uh, uh, in addition to what you're already doing from a training perspective. Um, but, so, some of the, some of the things that, uh, that we find in, uh, uh, in the golf swing in terms of patterns. So, I, I don't go into too much, because I already went late, because I'm, I'm going to talk on and on. But, um, I was telling Dr. Z earlier, is the way, the way this kind of came about was, at first, all I did was provide data to people. I mean, just, just provide data to clinicians and coaches, and say, here, here's the data. And in particular, clinicians. We provided the data to clinicians, and they say, oh, that's, that makes a lot of sense, because when I did my evaluation, this guy has this and this, and he's got this restriction, and blah, blah, blah. And they, go, they went and they attacked, it, attacked those restrictions, and then we'd retest them, and we would see virtually no improvement in performance, and there was no actual improvement in performance, you know, in terms of did they increase club head speed or whatever. When the idea was, okay, if we, we fix a restriction, we're automatically going to get better function, like activity-specific function. And we weren't seeing that, and it was getting kind of frustrating after a while. This was about 10 years ago or so, seven years ago. And so we started saying, well, what can we actually do? I mean, obviously, you have to fix a restriction, because that's, I mean, that's first. But then once you've addressed restrictions you might see with these people, how do we get them to move more effectively? You know, how do we get them to mimic patterns that the better golfers or the better cyclists or the better whatever are doing? How do we get them to do those patterns? So I started working um, on this maybe, I mean, it's something we've been doing all along, but in, in earnest five to seven years ago, looking at ways can we force people to move in patterns that mimic, you know, effective golf swing movement or, or effective cycling movement or whatever. So um, we came up with this stuff we call progressive skills training, which is kind of a blend of exercise, kind of a blend of technique. It's it's not really teaching you how to, it's not technique, you know, it's not really exercise, it's kind of a, a hybrid of both. Um, but it's been incredibly in fact, effective actually getting people to per perform better, especially when it's combined with therapeutic intervention or training or whatever, where you've got a nice blend, and then obviously with technique, because they've got to be able to play, put, put the club face on the ball, but in order to move more effectively. So the, the, some of the, the key things that we started to realize is that, that um, uh, your ability to maintain an axis of rotation in space and work perpendicular to that axis and keep on playing and engage muscles in sequence has a lot to do with how well you grip the ground, how well you stabilize, and not just how well you're connected, but how well you use that connection to create a certain pattern of movement. So we see in tour players that from the time they start their downswing to, to impact, they move their center of mass, so their center of their, their body, forward 17 centimeters, literally. I mean, you go 17 centimeters plus or minus like half a centimeter. So they are moving exactly 17 centimeters forward. And as they move 17 centimeters forward, they're pushing down and into the ground and they're creating a torque pattern that allows rotation. So they move from ball to foot to ball to foot, essentially along the target line. But at the same time, they're moving, they're rotating their lower body, which is an extremely important pattern. If that occurs appropriately, then they maintain an axis of rotation better, their swing planes are better, and they release the club better. So what you'll see a lot of, a lot of you know, golfers, in, you know, your, your sub-elite level golfers do, is give up their connection to the ground. So a lot of what you'll get is twisting like this. So what, what they're doing now is they're actually shifting weight more to their heel, or you get shifting like this, so now it's the outside of the foot. Same thing on the, on the down, down swing. You'll see a lot of people just spin out. Weight get, goes immediately to the heel. Toes come up off the ground. Or you see guys shift this way laterally, roll off to the outside of their foot. So they've lost their connection to the ground. It impacts how well they create torque or speed output at the pelvis, but it also impacts how well they stabilize their spine in terms of maintaining an axis of rotation and, and working rotation relative to that. So um, ways that uh, we started to say, okay, well, how can we start to, and the, the idea behind progressive skills training is, is uh, let's, if you give the body uh, too many complex, act or, you know, too, 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 too complex an activity, it won't, it doesn't learn very effectively. So let's just like, let's break it down using just the movement pattern, the gross movement pattern. Let's break it down to the smallest units of movement first. And let's, uh, let's, let's teach the body how to make that small unit of movement and then progress and evolve along, you know, to more complex stuff. So we start really, really simply, and we develop very small units of movement, and we link them together, um, and uh, and then build more complex movements. But we're doing everything relative to the golf swing. So it's got it's got components of exercise, got components of technique, but it's really more about kind of developing pattern. So one of the things that 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 and with, uh, trust me, I've been through, and I, I, it's all database. 
if, if we, what we do is we film people doing the exercises, we look at how they move, then we, then we put them on protocols and we film them after certain periods of time and see what happens. So it was all based on what works and what didn't work. So I, I'll just tell you that now because I can guarantee you someone will say, why don't you use Swiss ball? You could use this. Or why don't you use bands and pull out? There's, I mean, there's a million different variations that we try and that people have suggested. The one that works the best is something like the Swiss ball seems to work the absolute best. Squeeze between the knees. And, and gripping around. Now, there's a bunch of these. I'm only going to show you a couple. So, I mean, just.